we're going to delve into spectrum management certification and the need of high demand for spectrum managers, which is one of the things we do, being the National Spectrum Management Association. Um, we've been hearing from the National Science Foundation, from other federal agencies, from private sector entities, that there's just a massive uptick in the need for spectrum managers. And uh, so one thing we'll talk to is uh, we'll talk with Tom Fagan, the chair of uh, an RTA spectrum management certification program, and Dr. Sarah Sigwin, who's the senior project engineer also at NRTA. I believe we have them on the big screen. They're out and about uh, roaming the nation. And I'm trying to make eye contact with our tech team to make sure we think we're going to get them up there. All right. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. Fantastic. And we're glad you're here because we were planning on it. So um, let's see if we can go over uh, a little background on you and Sarah, real high level, and then we can jump into the, uh, uh, the big picture. So Tom is, uh, focuses on spectrum management for DOD, NASA, and NOAA, uh, which includes system engineering, satellite operations, spectrum allocation, and federal spectrum repurposing. His specialties are spectrum management, electromagnetic comp compatibility, radio frequency, and microwave electronics, RF safety, and electrostatic discharge, and radar. So he, he runs the gamut, and he trains people. And I'll let you introduce Sarah, Tom. If uh, you can hear me, and we'll we'll go from there. Uh, doc, this is Dr. Sarah Seguin. Uh, she and I both work for the Aerospace Corporation, and uh, she's a senior project uh, engineer, uh, working very heavily with me. And and there's my ugly mug on the big screen. Wonderful, thank you. <clears throat> so uh, I'll go into the presentation. Did you want me to? Uh, uh, present or can you guys put the slides up? Yeah, if you want to go through your formal piece and then we'll probably talk about the demand for spectrum certified spectrum managers, but we'd first like to hear about what you're up to and what your training is all about. Yeah, real good. Uh, so yeah, years, <clears throat> years and years ago, uh, it's actually part of the presentation. We, we, uh, started the INARDI, uh, certification program, uh, it started uh, for a different program, but uh, the big need was for certified spectrum managers. Uh, I think we've all seen some uh, real interesting uh, uh, resumes, and and if we had a uh, certification on there, you would know the person actually knows what they're talking about. So uh, yeah, if you go to the uh, presentation, we'll just go through that because it probably explains everything for you. So <clears throat> INARDI is the International Association for Radio Telecommunications and Electromagnetics. Quite the mouthful. So they they uh, abbreviate as INARDI. So they <clears throat> do the certification program for engineers and technicians in all sorts of fields, uh, telecommunications, electromagnetic compatibility slash interference, uh, product safety, electrostatic discharge control, uh, wireless device uh, professionals, and the latest one uh, from like 2019 is spectrum management. And that's the one I worked on. I also worked on the EMC one with Dr. Uh, Sarah. Uh, and I don't think uh, Dr. Sarah was involved in the ESD uh, control one, uh, but that's, uh, you know, many years ago. I'll really age myself with that one. Uh, next, please. So we started this, uh, you know, it says 2019, but the thought came around back in uh, the year 20 uh, or 2000, roughly. It took us about 19 years to get the traction on this. <clears throat> and uh, I think I was the uh, chair of TC6 when we first thought of this. Uh, now Dr. Sarah is the uh, chair of the Technical Committee on Spectrum Management for IEEE EMC uh, uh, Society. Uh, she made me the uh, subcommittee chair. I ran the spectrum management certification program. Uh, Christian Thornton uh, actually works at INARI. Dr. Sarah and I uh, work for the Aerospace Corporation, and uh, so uh, we're doing this uh, presentation uh, for uh, Christian. Next, please. 
though Nardi, as it originally started, was just for the U.S. It started in 1982. Uh, I go way back that far. Uh, it was started for electromagnetic compatibility. Uh, the NavLab folks uh, certified all this, the uh, test chambers, the testing for the U.S. Navy. One is certified engineers, the technicians, uh, in order to make sure all the testing was done properly. Uh, Nardi was so successful, the FCC authorized them to do the commercial operator's license uh, testing, and that's still going on today. Like I said, uh, about 10 years after we got the EMC program going, we started the ESD program. I think that was actually started back in 1990, but it formally got uh, uh, going in 1994. A uh, very successful program with the uh, ESD Association. Uh, so uh, we also worked on uh, EMC's uh, uh, Master EMC Association and a few others that work well. Uh, well, I did these charts uh, many years ago. Probably I've been doing this for uh, uh, your group uh, for probably 10 years now at least, but Back then, uh, the total that I knew was over 16,000 certified uh, folks with INARDI in 26 countries. I don't have an update on that. Uh, but uh, what I did get, uh, Sarah and I were talking to the INARDI folks the other day, and, and there's uh, 400 active certified uh, spectrum managers right now. Uh, they've actually uh, uh, given out 1,000 exams. Uh, and as we all know, there's been a whole lot of retirements. So the numbers uh, fixed at 400 right now. Uh, we're hoping to get a whole lot uh, more people to take the uh, exam and get certified because uh, it's a really good program. Uh, next, please. So certification. Why are we doing certification? Well, we've We've all seen those uh, resumes come in that are just glowing, but how do you know if the person's really done well? Well, if you go off and you have them take a test and, and uh, you know, add a, a letter or something from a, a boss or something, uh, but the certification really means a lot. It means that uh, they really care in what they do. Uh, they they want to show uh, that they are able to uh, pass the test, uh, and uh, <clears throat> they they're actually very good at what they do. So uh, again, the purpose was to uh, foster technical excellence in spectrum management and engineering. Uh, we really like that. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, the certifications, uh, we, we just talked to them, like I said, and, and they said this is a very fair test. Everybody likes the test, and and uh, maybe later on we can find out who all in the audience uh, actually has taken it and passed it. So, uh, again, it's to make sure we have a uniform level of uh, expertise and, and quality of engineer out there. Next, please. There we go. So, like I said, is to uh, make sure uh, we have a uh, 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 recognized credential in spectrum management. Uh, it's a good level of expertise. We're, we're told the test is not overly difficult and it's not too easy. So I think we found the right balance in there. Uh, if you take the test and pass it, uh, you're, you're very good in spectrum management and you have a real well round uh, experience. Uh, we'll go through that in a little bit. Uh, and, and I hope that everybody that does pass it actually puts this on their resume that they passed it. Uh, when you actually do pass it, we'll get an actual uh, INRD, uh number and it tells you the number of uh, 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 it's a sequential number for when you pass a test. And uh, I think I'm number one, Sarah, you're what, number two, something like that. So uh, we're, we're way up there. But, you know, we already knew the answers. So, it, yeah. So <clears throat> we, we all know about spectrum. 
You know, it, it's a finite resource. Everybody wants it. A lot of people pay lots of money for it. Uh, and it's really becoming uh, uh, difficult to uh, get your new system out there. All the systems out there are going wireless. I mean, I, I've seen some stuff that I never thought would go wireless go wireless. It's really something. We all know it takes lots of planning, frequency management, lots of coordination to do all this. And in order to do that, you really need to understand how RF works. You need to know about antennas. You need to know about transmitters. You know, need to know about receivers. And, and, and Dr. Sarah will go through some of that uh, in upcoming charts here. So we wanted to make sure that we were compatible with users worldwide. So, uh, you know, you may uh, uh, be from a different country, uh, but you'll be able to answer enough questions to pass, even if you don't know the U.S. regulations or or if we don't know the uh, European standards. Uh, we, we made it pretty, pretty well rounded for worldwide use. Uh, and and we'll go over some of the different areas of that real fast. Uh, I got involved in this because uh, DOD, uh, everybody wants to go after DOD spectrum because they see it as, a, uh, you know, like a pinata. You keep hitting it and you get all their spectrum. Uh, uh, DOD is just, you know, really getting hit hard and losing spectrum and, and uh, so we need to be more efficient on how we do this. And, and this was one of the things that DOD really, really liked. Uh, the DOD uh, uh, folks uh, really uh, backed this, and, and I hope they continue to back this. Uh, next, please. Uh, Sarah, did you want to go from here? Yeah, happy to. As Tom had said, the, the INRD Spectrum Engineering uh, certification is meant to show a, a great foundation and also um, show that someone has all the experience and all the qualifications really to do well within spectrum management. And so moving on to the next slide. The topics that are covered is really the full gamut because uh, some people think, think, well, it's spectrum management. What do you need? And everybody in this room kind of knows it. As Tom had mentioned, you really need a good basics foundation in basic theory um, and basic electromagnetic compatibilities theory, spectrum management and engineering and allocation and really uh, radio technology as well as Next slide, EMC design, uh, electromagnetic radiation hazards, prediction and analysis, things like link budgets and interference resolution, of course, testing measurement and validation and um, general program management. And to be a really good spectrum manager, you do have to have a really excellent technical foundation. And so all of these questions were carefully chosen and reviewed by Tom and myself and uh, some other folks, uh, someone who was from the NB NTIA and some other people who are really uh, long time people in the area to make sure that the questions were fair and show a really great foundation as well as a depth into the field. Next slide, please. So the general certification requirements, your score, uh, you have to have a passing score, answer all of the questions 70% or better. Um, and you need to submit three references, one for your supervisor and two peers. And then generally you can see the education college university. And then there's two levels. There's the spectrum manager engineer and the spectrum management technician. And uh, they have different levels of related work experience. For example, nine years for the engineer and six years for uh, the technician. And then of course, those are differences in how people would be working in the field. And also folks with advanced degrees get some credit for that as well, which is not on this slide. Next, next slide. 
All of the questions are in this form. They do have to be multiple as when I was a professor, we, they love, the students love to call it multiple guests, but it's, you know, a multiple choice question. Uh, obviously this is not one of the questions on there, but as an example, you would just choose one of the four answers and uh, each one of the questions. Then if you recall, we had a list of all of the categories, each one of the questions would fall under one or more categories. And there's a pool of, 830 about maybe 832 questions I total. think that's right yeah yeah somewhere around there um and of course we want to keep the question pool fresh as things change within the field too and generally the as Tom had mentioned the feedback on the exams has been very positive that they people believe that it's been an overall fair exam and there haven't been any complaints and it's a generally good certification. Next slide, please. Okay, and so the the exam preparation, this is, um, it's one part, four hours in duration. So it's a four hour exam, just one part, all the questions are multiple choice as that example was in the prior, there's 50 questions. Um, all should be attempted and generally no two exams are the same because they're just pulling from those uh, 830 or so questions from the pool. It's open book, open notes, and you can use a scientific calculator. And to pass the exam, you just need 70% or better. And you can retake the exam after 90 days and there's no credit for past exam scores. All right, that is the last slide. Um, please let us know, or Tom, did you have anything to add to that? So like I said, uh, uh, Sarah and I work for the Aerospace Corporation. We don't get any money from this. We just, uh, we're in charge of the program. Uh, you can always uh, reach out to us with any questions you want. Uh, if you want to get in touch with INARDI, it's INARDI.org. Uh, Christian Thornton uh, runs the whole program. He does all the exams. Uh, you can test online. Uh, you can test at a university. You can test almost anywhere in the uh, world. They have test setups. Uh, what do you call those? Uh, do you remember, Sarah, what you called those? Uh, not, not Proctor. Uh, was it a Proctor system? Yeah, I can't remember what he called it, but I mean, they can remotely proctor it, so it can be taken entirely online. So there's a lot of yeah. flexibility in being able to or, take or it. Or it could be done at a university or school or something with somebody sitting there. So uh, uh, anyway, uh, this is Christian's uh, info on the uh, chart. And of course, uh, you know, I've been a long time member of uh, the your organization and given us many times, I'm sure you have my contact info and I can always get stuff over to uh, Sarah if you need anything. So, uh, but uh, that's it. Nice, short and sweet. I do want to ask uh, how many people uh, in the audience have taken the test and and uh, see if we can get some feedback from the audience. Uh, well, let me see if we can get a show of hands. Uh, has anyone taken the Nardi test here? So you have a you have a rich pickings here, my friend. Um, uh, so what we know is that we have, uh, as far as we know, the world's largest collection of spectrum managers. Through our, we have a closed uh, LinkedIn group of, as of yesterday, 760 spectrum managers. They're usually industry or you know FCC equivalent people in Japan or Middle East or UK or wherever. Um, and other federal agencies equivalents. Um, there's that. We also know that the National Science Foundation and a few other federal agencies have come to us in the very recent uh, past, and they've been asking, how do we get more spectrum managers? Uh, the demand has skyrocketed uh, there, you know, for a lot of reasons, 
And even folks in you know, the private sector need spectrum managers just to deal with, if you have a corporate campus or a university, or there's a long list of reasons why people need to apprehend and understand the spectrum that's out there. And I also noticed that, and this will be a subject on tomorrow's, one of tomorrow's panels, that one of your subsections is RF safety as part of your rad has or your radiation hazard uh, section of your testing. And uh, that is you know, a requirement of almost any licensee in the US to make sure on a rooftop or a tower that they're meeting the FCC standards, uh, part 101 uh, exposure standards. And that area is, uh, has a large scale demand curve as well. And it looks like people who own real estate or thinking about buying real estate and people who have electromagnetic health sensitivity, which is a subject, and uh, people who want to, uh, uh, for a variety of reasons, want to uh, spend less money on electricity, which is a massive, massive uh, cost in the, in the wireless world. All of them uh, can measure that by a reduction in, uh, on the rad has side. Uh, so all that, being able to measure that credibly and, and potentially this will be a criteria if you're in Montgomery County, Maryland, before you can build a system, you might have to meet the, a certain uh, measurement and you're gonna need a, a certified spectrum manager, presumably to, to certify that you've met that. So all those needs are uh, leading up to a question, which is uh, how would you train uh, 50,000 spectrum managers? How would that happen? Well, the only class that I know right now uh, outside of some private, uh, you know, I do uh, 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 a uh, spectrum management class for the Aerospace Corporation, but uh, Fred Matos, who used to be uh, uh, over at the NTA, actually has a college and he teaches a spectrum management class. Uh, Sarah, do you remember the name of that? Uh, it starts with an A. I'm sorry, I don't. I'm dropping the name too. Uh, but anyway, oh, it's uh, I, I know it's uh, Anne Arundel County Community College. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. He's, uh, I think, the only person teaching a spectrum management class. And uh, my hope, uh, you know, I've known Fred for, you know, geez, 30 some odd years. I was hoping he would actually have everybody taking this class take this exam. Uh, you know, that's my hope that we can eventually pull those two things together. Uh, but you know, uh, NTIA has a spectrum management class. Of course, that's more spectrum management. Uh, FCC, uh, I'm really not sure if there is a spectrum management class with the FCC. Uh, and, uh, you know, I get that question asked all way too often. So if you have some answers on other spectrum management classes that are open widely, uh, I think uh, we could get more people there. Uh, I know the NTIA spectrum class is very good as well, but I think uh, Fred's class uh, at the college is uh, probably the best I've seen. May, may I okay. interject? Sure. Sure. So as a, as a recovering academic, I like to say, um, I, uh, I, I have my PhD from Missouri University of Science and Technology, and um, they have a really good electromagnetic compatibility uh, program, and I'm sure most, if not all, people within the room have a background, I mean, Tom and I do, in electromagnetic compatibility, and, and being active in the EMC Society, I happen to think that like a, a good base for spectrum managers and training is probably EMC people and electrical engineers and people who've done more wireless propagation. And then you add on top of that, the, the spectrum. I mean, that's how I got interested in spectrum. So it, it, the problem is, as you saw with like all of the depth of knowledge that you need is you, you have to start out with a certain base and that, you know, a lot of times I know people come from it from many different different directions, but a lot of time that's electrical engineering. But I, I think that like a subset or expanding that into EMC is is an option or finding more people to go into spectrum that way. Great. Um, if it's all right, uh, we'll, we'll uh, open it up, see if we have a question or two from the from the live audience. And again, this will go out to our our online audience in you know the, the larger group, but let's see if we got a, uh, are there any questions from in the house? 
Any questions from in the house? We do have a question. Um, hold on. Just a, a question on the certification program specifically. Uh, oh, thank Can you. Can you guys hear him? Yeah. My name is R.J. Russell. I'm with the Society of Broadcast Engineers. Uh, I'm National Frequency Coordination Manager. But one of the questions I've got on your certification program is the requirement for the degree. Uh, because there's a lot of people that come out of the military like myself with the training and the expertise that wouldn't be able to get certified because of the degree requirement. Uh, is that an untapped resource that, that needs to be identified? Great question. Well, we actually uh, worked on that years ago. If you have a diploma or, you know, the military training, that all qualifies. So there should be absolutely no problem. In fact, uh, I, I know at least 20 folks that came out of uh, the military that were spectrum managers uh, as, uh, you know, E7, E8, or E9 uh they took the exam, they passed it, uh, and they're certified as a, uh, well, I think they all went for engineer, but uh, uh, I'm sure there's a couple that went for the technician as well, but they had no problem and they're completely certified now. Uh, but we did take that into account. Uh, uh, you just have to have something, uh, you know, I think we have on there, it was a diploma or certification, uh, because we had several people with a GED uh, high school uh, degree that was working for the FCC, and uh, we got them certified as well. So uh, uh, should be no problem with the military folks. In, in fact, uh, uh, we, we've got quite a few really good folks at the Spectrum Management in the military that have gone into the program. Yeah, and on the website, and maybe we should update our slides, Tom, they, they do have, I know we have the exact uh, table for certification requirements, but they do have a, if you were in the service, you just provide proof of service, or so basically you just reach out to them. So those folks are very valuable and can take the exam as well. So they did update the website. Good. Thank you. I'll, I'll update the charts. All right. Well, we've, uh, I think we've run out of time. We are greatly appreciative. I think we'll do some internal polling and maybe send you some data and maybe over to, it uh, sounds like maybe NTIA and FCC and NSF and start uh, maybe a little round table of how to generate more spectrum managers uh, through the turbine. So, um, and I, you know, everyone seems to need them. So we might as well get them printed. We have 3D printers too. I guess we'll print some of you. So. All right. Thank you, Tom, Dr. Sarah. Um, we greatly appreciate your cooperation and dialing in from wherever you're all hanging out. And we look forward to further dialogue. Thank you so much. All right. We're going to clap for you. A round of applause.